Okay, we are back in Monster Loves You. I wonder if I could center this a little bit better. Yeah, that's nice. Uh, I hope I have my old game. Oh, I guess I do have my old game. I was brave. Uh, I tried. I, I was fooling around with a couple other games, and I've I got up because I hurt. I'm the. Uh, it's uh, having a really rainy spring, and it just. And I I am not up to the controls and figuring out a couple of new games right now. So. And I play so much Don't Starve, I'd kind of like to do something else. I know not everybody wants to watch Don't Starve. Do I start from scratch each time? Yeah, the monster building. We were born from slime. Ooh, I don't know what I did last time. I think I did actions and attitudes. Let's go with words and thoughts. You're not awake yet, but soon your first eye will open. Your simple dreams will give way to life itself you dream of. Now, obviously, we're going to uh, be repeating some stuff. And I, with my memory, I may accidentally do some stuff the same way I did it the first time. So, you know, you just have to kind of bear with me. All right. Helping the sick and soothing the woeful. Outsmarting everybody else. Speaking true when others lie. Oh, these are all different, so I can't do them. Now, one of the big issues last time was respect. And I think that outsmarting everyone else isn't good. Now, helping the sick and soothing the woeful, I thought being a, just a badass was the way to travel. And maybe it is sometimes. I don't know. Speaking true when others lie. Boy, that's a... I don't remember honesty. I don't know. With my luck, it'll be ferocity again, and I won't have any. Damn, that just sounds like more fun, doesn't it? Screw it. Clarinless, plus nine. Your body is turning, twisting, growing solid in the middle of a great vat of green slime. It's time to be born. Okay. Okay, uh, be born. You awaken in the thawing season when the ground is soft and wet. Your eyes open. You're a morsel, just barely born. You float in a spawning vat. Dozens of the morsels are exploring, flailing, and stealing food from each other. Try to swim. Ah, yes, but born. What is the question? And this is all the explanatory stuff, and I missed some of it. From the slime, what do you think? What is this thing slime? It's the stuff monsters are made of. You don't mean we're actually born from this slime. Look, it's just like mold and mushrooms. It's just a sticky side of nature. When the spark of life enters a colloidal gel, monsters just happen. Fascinating. Try to swim. That's kind of interesting. They did some experiments where they made a permeable membrane. And I don't remember the details of it, but they put stuff inside of it. This was not living matter, but stuff that interacted with other stuff. And they managed to, I don't know, they had a, a colloidal gel or something similar to that. And these little membrane things, let's call them cells, although there was nothing living in them. There's, it was like it would add atoms or molecules of this or that. And over a period of time, they became selective about what they would pull out of the goo around them. And they actually, in a sense, became active in deciding how they would grow and, and uh, continue to grow. And it was uh, kind of verging on some of the things that living things do. It was, uh, I wish I knew what those experiments were or when. It was... Uh, I'm not explaining it well, but it was pretty uh, spooky stuff. It was not like cloning or anything. It was entirely made done with dead material. So anyway, uh, monsters just happen. Fascinating. That's like orcs. That's why you got to burn them. Fascinating. Try to swim. Another morsel swims towards you. It opens its mouth to show you a set of small, sharp teeth. It bites you. Okay. Uh, I think we did intolerable stop that biting. Aye, swim away from the toothy morsel. 
You kick with new legs and paddle with new arms, squeak with a new mouth and cry tears of slime from your glistening eye. The aggressor is left in your wake. It turns and latches onto another morsel. Keep swimming away. Lure the attacker away from the new victim. You squeak and splash the violent morsel until it turns away from its prey. It swims at you. Lead it away from everybody, then escape. Let it take another <laughs> bite of you to keep it busy. <laughs> Let's uh, do the lead away thing. It sounds more sensible. All right, some more cleverness. You keep squeaking as you swim, just slowly enough that the other morsel will continue to pursue. It's getting tired. Time to go. As the violent morsel slows to a stop, you speed up. You leave it in an empty part of the spawning vat where it has nobody to bite. Later, hater. <laughs> Splash, flutter, splish, squeak. Another morsel is too weak to swim properly. It's swinking, sink, it's swinking toward the bottom of the spawning vat. <laughs> uh, it must be Mountain Dew time to clear the cobwebs out of my mouth. Oh, gracious. I just hope all these spring rains in. There better be some serious flowers is all I got to say. Sinking toward the bottom of the spawning vat. Oh yeah, ignore it and swim on. Too bad, but these things happen. Oh no, that's terrible. Crud muffins. Too bad, these things happen. You watch the half-formed baby monster slip beneath the surface. It begins to break apart. Swim down and take a bite out of the weakling. Confront the harsh reality of death. Watch it die. Com comfort the dying morsel. Swim down and take a bite out of the weakling. You dart in and rip a chunk out of the slimy body. It's good. So delicious, in fact, that you find yourself eyeing other morsels. The strong as well as the weak. Belly's full, so they're safe. For now. Ha ha. <laughs> well, being good lasted a long time, didn't it? You have grown too big for the spawning vat. You must move on to the next stage of life and become a monsterling. Got any advice? Uh, no, don't grow up. Got any advice? You're going to get into some trouble, which is great. Exercise your bravery, cleverness, ferocity, kindness, and honesty. What kind of monster will you be? Uh, a dead one last time. Okay. <laughs> Indeed, to the brood cave and adventure. Now, have I got sound, the music too low? Yeah, I kind of do. I could live with more music, Fred. I just dealt with some games and, and finding stuff in them. Please be easy to find. Yeah, let's turn you up. I was sick last time I played this. Oh, gracious, I had terrible flu. All right, resume. And we could even go a little higher than that. Reset metals, reset monster. I don't know what happens when you do that. I guess you get a different monster, derp. Uh, resume. Now, I had, didn't know that the kid had done this game. Uh, Death Even 13, my son. Choose your adventure. Okay, and that's not active. Uh, oh, these are, some of these are, I don't remember a snaky snake, because I do a snaky snake. Oh, because we took a different, we took, what was it, words and thoughts or something. What's that noise from the spawning vat? Ah, go and see. I like it when I have choices. <laughs> you rush over. A big snake is eating helpless morsels. They moan and cry, but it doesn't stop. What? Bring it on, snake. Ah, see, now it's too loud. Not your problem. They're just morsels. Who doesn't eat morsels? Eat some too. Ah, uh, that'll give us bravery. Which actually isn't a bad thing. Ah, uh, ferocity again. See, I don't know squat, do I? You puff yourself up and approach the snake. It glances at you, then swallows another morsel whole. Stand between the snake and the morsels. Hey, snake, you're what's for dinner. Fear not here. Wrestle the snake away from the vat. Uh, hey snake, you're what's for dinner. You pounce on the snake. It's five times your length and twice your weight, but your claws cut its scales like they were paper. Eat the snake, share the snake meat with the morsels, drive the snake away without killing it. Eat the snake. What do we get? More ferocity. 
You start with the tail and gobble the snake one big bite at a time. The skull crunches in your jaws and a fang jabs your tongue. So, why is that a question? Oh no, not smart. Smart! You are the evil of the world. You cause me to have problems. Smark sits quietly by himself in the furthest, darkest corner of the cave. He's slumped and deflated like a float pod, missing the half the gas inside. Oh no, this is the same thing. The hell with him. I'm not doing Smark this time. Just, just bug off, Smark. Smark mopes around for a while and lies down and doesn't move for a long time. You feel slightly guilty. I probably missed a chance for points there. Ah well. Smart greats. If I didn't mess up, it wouldn't be me. Nash gas spies a delicious mouse head mushroom. Mine. She plucks it from the floor, but it tumbles from her claws and bounces into a dark crevice in the wall. Get it! Let Nash gas get her own darn mushroom. Tell Nash gas she's too afraid to go after the mushroom. Clevis, minus four. Barry, zero. Nashgas slaps your hand. No way am I scared. She scrambles in the darkness and returns eating the last bite of mushroom. I think I'm screwed. Huh. Tempted to just start over. I guess I wasn't cut out to be a monster. Elder Marinus floats in a pool of cave water, puffing her body like a bulb weed. She points at something deep under the water. Will you get that for me, little one? But you can't swim. Who's Elder Marinus? She's one of the older monsters. She's got scary poisonous spines all over her, but she's really nice. Okay, I can't swim. Sure, you're not afraid. She plunge straight down. Figure out another way to get the thing out of the water. Tell her you can do it, but you don't feel like it. Figure out another way. You jump in and pull yourself along the bottom of the pool with your claws. You easily reach the object, which is a funny yellow rock. Okay. Uh, here's one for you. Uh, a huge number of cowboys, because of the various places they had lived at the time they lived in, didn't know how to swim. And they would reach a river. Now, you see them riding their horses across the rivers, but that's not always the best thing in the world with half-broken horses they had to work with. And the, the nearness of cattle and other horses. So a lot of times they would do whatever the hell they did with the, and then cross on, on, you know, without being on the horse. And since they couldn't swim, they would put rocks, this is true, they would put rocks in their pockets and, and walk across the bottom. Of course, that only works on little rivers. ha! <laughs> Okay, uh, what? Oh, okay, we're done. Sorry, I got, I distracted myself. You roll it back to Marinus who pats you on the head. Clever one, well done. So, I just suck at this game. You're halfway towards leaving, becoming an adolescent. Firm up your personality as much as you can. Oh, you know, it is what it is. He looks good. You're chatting with Gob Claws and Blistery when a foul stench watch flops in. Monsterlings all over the cave are shivering and hold their noises, holding their noses. Yuck, what is it? It's Blots. Gob Claws says, uh, Someone's got to tell him he stinks, but not the way monsters should. Blots sees your group and makes his way over. Gob Claws and Blistery retreat. Uh, Glucky's a tired. Well, I guess we gotta talk to him. You spread your claws in a friendly way and Blot sits next to you. Blot's pouts. Why'd they run away? Tell a small lie. He's fragile. Make up a clever story to help him. He begins to tell the story of the cleanest monster, a shining paragon of hygiene and delightful sense. You can almost hear the sounds of bathing. Blot's is enraptured by the story. Keep going. Yeah, right. You now see, that's just but I'm fussing. Getting really zero and negative zeros is bad. It irritates me. In with, but I only made up the cleanest monster who is not you. You stink, Blots. You need to wash you. And you do. 
Okay. Problem solved. So what do we got? We have nothing but cleverness and ferocity. I remember this problem before. Dash, gash, and gob claws are racing to the ceiling of the cave. Oh no, we've done this one. They've already climbed way up. When gob claws invites you to join them, you don't see a good way up. The, uh, look at the paths they took and copy them. Just face up to it. Admit you aren't much of a climber. Make a fair effort, but stop before you get hurt. Look at the paths they tried. You follow Nash Gash's claw marks halfway up the cave wall. Now, last time I think I got respect by admitting I was a putz. Then slip sideways to gob claws with being more careful. You meet them at the top to their surprise. Okay. Nash Gash shows you a rock. It's the best rock in the whole cave. It looks a bit like a sleeping rabbit, but it's otherwise ordinary. Tell her she can find better. Nash Gash is always slapping you. Slap the rock out of her claws. She's dangerous. Tell a white lie. I don't know. Tell her she can find better. Well, that was what I was trying for. Nash gas scowls and shakes the rock at you. You're lucky I'm not going to break this against your hard head, soft skull. Okay. Let it go. Stand up to her with your claws. Your bare claws get Nash Gash's attention. I just don't want to embarrass you. Want you to embarrass yourself showing off that crappy rock. She considers your words and drops the rock. And thanks you. I don't know, I think some of these you just never know. That no bravery is probably not a good thing. Uh, scuffle. Blister climbs on top of the lichen pile. She refuses to let any other monsterling eat. Claim herself ruler of the lichen pile. Charge. She's an idiot. Find an elder and destabilize the pile. Gang up on her. Well, that's probably ferocity. I don't think that'll be honesty. I don't know what that'll be. 